Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today we will discuss uh, vaporizers. The aim of the vaporizer is to deliver a diluted uh, amount with a fresh gas flow uh, in two ways. First of all, the splitting. By splitting the uh, fresh gas flow into two uh, lines, as you can see, one is bypassing the vaporizer and the other one is entering the vaporizer forcefully causing the process of vaporization controlled by the knob as we can see uh, the second so we do, do this we we call it a uh, variable by, uh, bypass vaporizer the second uh, method is to uh, directly inject the uh, vapor direct to the uh, fresh gas uh, uh, flow uh, line as you can see we have a fresh gas low uh, going in a, a special line and the other flow is inducing the process of vaporization by heat making bubbles, these bubbles uh, are jury joined uh, by the other one going to the patient. So these are the two uh, types, uh, the variable bypass and the measured flow uh, uh, vaporizer. Uh, to uh, define the, both of them, we have the first one, which is defi divided into two types, uh, the plenum vaporizer and the plenum vaporizer with electronic control. Both of them uh, are responsible for uh, uh, vaporization of different types of uh, inhalation anesthetics. An example, we have the TIC-5 and the uh, 7 vaporizers from General Electric. We have the Vapor uh, 2000 series from Draeger, and then we have the Sigma Delta plenum. And then we have the plenum, plenum vaporizer with electronic uh, uh, control, uh, by example, by Alaeddin Cassette vaporizer, which is so, uh, shown in these three uh, uh, figures. We this is uh, this the how the handling this the hand handle handle of the cassette being administrated through a spring uh, uh, loaded valves, and then we have the filling of the different types of the port of filling of different part, tar, uh, parts of the uh, cassette, and then after that we have what we call the uh, direct injection volatile anesthetic vaporizers. We have two types. Uh, we have the Draeger Diva, uh, which is present in Zeiss uh, uh, station. And we have the Macket uh, C950 series. So these are the two types of the direct injected. And this is the uh, diagram showing, uh, showing the, how does this uh, uh, make it work. I'm going to show it later on in a, a bigger figure. Now we come to explanation of the uh, Alaeddin. Alaeddin is made of two parts. Uh, we have uh, the cassette part, as we can see uh, from the picture. And I have the uh, part that is electronic, which is uh, 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 positioned inside the uh, working station of the uh, vaporizer. Uh, this, this system must have a main power or a battery or a, a, pop, a proper oxygen concentration, other where, where it, not, it, would not, it will not work. Uh, and of course, we have, as we said, a key, uh, key fill, uh, fillers. And whenever the ball in the uh, bottom bottom uh, reaches uh, downwards, we, 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 it is denoted that the volume is around uh, uh, only 80 millimeter or less, uh, where, whereas it has been uh, full, it, uh, it, it yields uh, 250 milliliter. Of course, as we said, we have a spring-loaded valve that, uh, that is, administrates the cassette to the station. And then we have a, a pressure relief valve to open in case of increased pressure inside this cassette, suppose by over uh, filling. This is the diagram showing the Alaeddin, which is made of two parts. This is the cassette part, and this is the CBU uh, part, which is uh, controlling this system by a microprocessor. And you can see uh, the amount of, uh, of uh, liquid uh, fill and how does it uh, initiate the process of vaporization by a bypass. Of course, this is going to a special uh, pass, and the other part is splitting going to the vaporizer. Uh, where uh, it's being controlled by the CBU. This is a side uh, uh, view of it, and you can see the bevel system. The bevel system will, sh will show, show it later on, and this is the vaporizer uh, 
chamber is the pin which is incorporated into the into the workstation and this is another figure showing of course this is the pins and this the identification magnet position uh, where the uh, station identifies the uh, vaporizer entering through it and this is the handle and this is a locking me mechanism i said before and this is the field system this is a normal uh, uh, bypass uh, uh, working vaporizer where the uh, downstream we call it up i'm sorry we call it upstream this is the area where the fresh gas go, goes through and then it goes through a, a resistor where it enters the vaporizer causing the process of vaporization and the vapor goes upwards and this is what we will see later on which is called the uh, thermo uh, thermo compensation rod this one and then the vaporizer is rejoined uh, with the fresh gas flow to reach to the patient so this is the normal normal uh, scheme of contemporary vaporizers present This uh, figure showing the market, uh, as we said uh, before, a direct injection of the uh, of the vapor into into the circulation into I'm sorry to the patient directly. So the market uh, injector, uh, the working principle, as you can see, this is the uh, container cooling, uh, co uh, co containing the liquid. It grows uh, through a draining uh, a plug, and then we go a safety valve, and then we go to a liquid anesthetic injector, and we have this what we call a injector uh, sensor, and then. The other module I'm going to say later on of the vaporizer will uh, will induce uh, forcefully a fresh gas flow, and this this injector will uh, be heated by a heater to induce a vapor pressure, which is uh, with uh, combined with the fresh uh, fresh gas go, uh, flow going to the patient. So this is a market at 950 series. Uh, the mode of action. This is the Draeger. Diva vaporizer. It's it, it's form of the same uh, principle. We have the uh, the uh, vaporizer uh, module, and then we have a, a dosing chamber. We have a liquid gas. All these are chamber going to a valve, and the valve uh, going to a vapor, vaporizing ch chamber, which is heated and using also a, a, a jet, and it's being heated going to the patient. And all this is controlled by a microprocessor or a feedback. Uh, control which controls the concentration and the uh, flow going through this vaporizer. Of course, it works like the same principle of uh, the Volkes vacuum. By the way, as long as I got this uh, this slide, it shows the saturated vapor pressure of different anesthetics. We have the disfluorine. Uh, you know, the saturated vapor pressure is temperature dependent. Whenever I increase the temperature, the uh, rate uh, the pressure increases uh, up to whenever I reach a hundred percent of the concentration. Uh, uh, at 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 this point, uh, uh, the vapor pressure is uh, reaching the to the atmospheric pressure, so it boils. So we have this fluorine boiling almost at twenty three. We have uh, halocene and isofluorine that are similar to each other, boiling at fifty. And we have trichloroethylene, which was used before for analgesia in obstetric, boils at uh, 86. You see, so th the difference, is we, we call it the low volatility. Of course, water boils as 100. Uh, the, 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 the line on the right side gives a hint about the vapor pressure percent from 10 to 100. And on the right side, we can have the uh, saturated vapor pressure, you see, uh, till it reaches uh, the atmospheric pressure. So. The halocene isoforane at 20 almost, uh, the vapor pressure is around around uh, 400 and some some uh, something uh, else. You see, and then on the other side we have the vapor uh, concentration uh, pressure in kilo pascal. Now we go to the second uh, slide. As we said before, uh, the principle uh, of the direct injector of, of uh, for volatile anesthetics uh, uh, are uh, based on the or are the, the two types, the Draeger Diva, and uh, which is working the Zeiss uh, anesthetic. It has two uh, modules. A, a module, as we can see, which uh, contains the specific uh, vapor, uh, liquid anesthetic, and a built-in gas uh, module. Both are module uh, are controlling the 
uh, uh, the vapor pressure uh, by uh, jet and uh, heat, heater. You see, they are pressurized and go and so far and different chambers still it reaches uh, to the patient. You see, of course, as you said, there's a microprocessor controlling everything. That make it uh, uh, 950. We showed before that it has also an, an injector and a heater uh, going to the patient. That, uh, benefit of it, it, it works on the what we call the flow eye switch uh, switch uh, working station, and it's uh, a bit light, uh, and it can be refilled while still uh, uh, slotted. And this figure uh, shows, of course, as we said before, the the saturated vapor pressure, as we see before, as we see, and then we have three. Uh, or four four forms of the uh, draw over vaporizer, which we will explain in the other. We have the uh, Oxford miniature vaporizer, and we have the Epstein Macintosh uh, Oxford, as you can see, with the water jacket. And then we have the Goldman's vaporizer. All these are called draw over vaporizers. And this is the normal uh, contemporary vaporizers. And this are uh, a picture will show the compensation, thermal compensation. And this uh, are the direct injector. And this also are a, a compensator uh, for increasing uh, the surface of the uh, vaporization area. Uh, this one is called the cowl. Cowl means that a uh, hood. We will we'll explain. The cowl uh, is, looks like a hood that is being worn by uh, monks. Uh, this is the beginning of the summer, summer, summarizing the book that I am based uh, on, which is the clinical uh, basic, uh, basic uh, physics and clinical measurements. Uh, the first uh, three points uh, we, we will show that well, what's the aim of vaporization is to uh, uh, induce a controlled uh, flow of a suitable anesthetic concentration to the patient to uh, rejoin the fresh gas flow, of course. The concentration, suppose, of isoflurane in the bottle is around 32%. So it's beyond the concentration used, and it, 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 it could be, of course, toxic. You see, this is why we use vaporizer to control the flow to give me, to give me maximum 6 or 5%. five percent. So this is the aim of the vaporizer. And we, we told you about, about the uh, saturated vapor pressure. The third thing is now the, the, this definition of uh, vaporization is based on two types or the, 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 the classification is based on two, two, uh, two types. The uh, uh, plenum vaporizer, blow over vaporizer, and the draw over vaporizer. The plenum vaporizer, plenum means that you are uh, uh, blowing into, uh, you know, the, the music instrument, uh, instrument uh, and using blowing. So this is a plenum. So the fresh gas flow is going by force. Uh, through uh, the, the what we call it the uh, downstream. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Going through from the this is this this part is called the upstream and this is the part leaving is called downstream. So it's going forcibly under pressure to induce the process of vaporization. Whereas blow over it uh, depends upon the negative pressure created by the patient, which is drawing uh, air of or, or oxygen or whatever the carrier gas to induce the process of vaporization. Vaporization, uh, whether it's done by the patient or by a concertina of the vaporizer post the, uh, the uh, vaporized. Uh, the second thing we are going to talk about is the boils uh, bottle. Boils bottle, I'm going to uh, uh, enlarge the figure now. It's made of a glass, and this glass, of course, have a, has a, a coefficient, a very low coefficient thermal uh, uh, transmission. It transmits uh, the, uh, the, the heat very slowly and has a very slow uh, heat capacity. It cannot carry, uh, 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 act as a heat reservoir. Uh, it, uh, I'll show it later. I'll show it now uh, how to, uh, to, 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 uh,
this is the, the theoretical vapor pressure we told you uh, before. And then we go downwards to see. Uh, by the way, this is the method how to increase the surface of vaporization. This is wicks. We'll show later on what the meaning of wicks. They are a projection uh, from, from the vaporizer to outwards, uh, which increases the surface area. As you can see, it's not just a straight low, it's going upwards and down and so forth. And this is the bevel system we, we told you before. This is direct the uh, fresh gas flow over the surface of the anesthetic vaporizer. And this is the cowl we, we told you before, uh, which will be shown now in the boils bottle. And this is the centered uh, tube which will, will tell you later on how it creates bubbles which increases surface area. I wanted to show you the boils bottle. So we don't have the boys bottle. We'll, we'll, I'll show it later on. So uh, as we said, it is, uh, it's made of uh, a, 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 a gas plot with, 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 with a low specific heat, heat and heat capacity. Uh, as we said before, we approximate the fresh gas flow by a, a plunger, a plunger and a cow uh, to make the fresh gas flow close as much uh, to the vaporizer. So we have problems in the boil's blood bottle that uh, it is affected by the rate of flow and uh, the change of temperature. Uh, when, whenever the flow is very uh, low, uh, it gives enough time for the uh, vapor to uh, be uh, uh, recollected in a high concentration, so it gives a high uh, percent. So it is uh, affected by the flow, so that we call it non-calibrated. On the other hand, of course, the process of vaporization needs heat. This heat has been taken from, uh, from the, uh, the liquid itself and from the surrounding causing decrease of temperature and uh, almost icing around the ether blood bottle, uh, decreasing uh, the, uh, the rate of vaporization, hence the saturated vapor pressure. So this is why we had uh, to have a new modern uh, anesthetic vaporizers. Uh, the first problem to overcome is the flow dependence. We have uh, seven, uh, seven points uh, to talk about. Of course, the, the the, the, the book uh, is, is writing all this in, in, a, in a several paragraphs, so I'm going to memorize it in uh, several uh, seven points. What is the aim or how can I achieve a, a, that the vaporizer is working in respect of the flow? I'll make the vapor coming out of the vaporizer from the uh, upstream fully saturated, maximally saturated, and then the final concentration will be uh, uh, the bypass uh, amount uh, diluting this uh, this uh, this uh, fully saturated vapor flow meter. So this is the aim of uh, of controlling uh, the flow. The 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 how 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 the concentration is being estimated. Uh, uh, we 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 say suppose. Uh, that we have a, a five percent of uh, this or ten percent of this uh, fresh gas flow going through the vaporizer. This vaporizer contains, suppose, isoflurane, uh, which uh, yields uh, thirty-two uh, kilopascal, which is thirty-two percent of the total. So we have a percent and a, 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 a partial pressure of the anesthetic. So uh, whenever ten percent goes inside the vaporizer, it takes ten percent of the thirty-two. So it will give us. At 2.3%. This is how the uh, the knob works. So whenever you 
uh, set the knob at 2.3 or 1.6, whatever, whatever it depends about the upon, upon the uh, splitting ratio. You see, this is how the 2.3 was created through the dilution of the uh, uh, isoflurane by the 10% uh, entering the vaporizer. Of course, we must have a proper working uh, system or we'll not all this, otherwise we'll, we, we will yield a uh, different uh, concentration. So the main of, the main of uh, get, uh, getting a uh, fully saturation is to increase the surface area. I'm going to show it later on, how to increase the surface area. As we can see, I'm sorry, the, 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 the diagram is upside down. So we have wicks to wicks, whether they are fabric or uh, metal, are a part which have dipped, uh, a part of it is dipped in, in the liquid and sitting in the upper part is, is uh, exposed. So uh, the surface tension uh, and the capillaries of this dip uh, creates uh, or, or, or drags the uh, liquid and acidic upwards, increasing the surface area, as you can see, in, in all this direction will increase the surface area. Uh, the other, other uh, system is what we call centrid tube, it's a tube, which is made of glass or metal, has holes. This holes makes the fresh gas flow enter and creating bubbles. These bubbles increase the surface area. So these are the two methods to assure that the vapor uh, coming from the vapor vaporizer is fully uh, saturated. Of course, the splitting, uh, uh, the, the pressure in the splitting ratio, whether it's in the bypass or in and through the vaporizer, uh, have different resistance according, of course, to the type of flow, whether it's laminar or turbulent, and on the uh, character of the fresh gas flow according its density, whether it's oxygen or nitric oxide and oxygen. Uh, we must put in our mind that uh, nitric oxide being dissolved in, in the carrier uh, uh, during pass, uh, passage in this liquid. So it will affect the final concentration uh, uh, by its uh, absorption in the liquid. The copper kettle as a method to uh, overcome this uh, problem of uh, flow dependence, as, you, as it's shown in the figure, it uh, has two flow meters. One of the flow meters uh, uh, goes through the bypass chamber and the other flow meters goes directly to the vaporizer chamber. You see, uh, and according to the temperature, there is a thermometer. According to the, the temperature, we can adjust the flow going to the vaporizer so that it can give, give me the uh, the concentration uh, required. I'm going to show you some of uh, the uh, par, uh, par, uh, figures. I'm sorry, I'm going slow. This, as we said before, how to increase the surface area. And this is the cowl of, uh, of the uh, ether bottle. And this is, uh, this is going to be explained later on what we call the bimetallic strip, or two stri a strip made of two different uh, uh, metals, how it closes the uh, upstream uh, whenever the temperature is high. And this is the uh, metallic rod made of anvil and, uh, and brass to control also the opening of the bypass to minimize when, uh, whenever the temperature is high. And this, this is how the vaporizer works. It's, uh, the, it's the upstream and the downstream. And this is the point how, the, how do we uh, initiate the concentration of the anesthetic by the knob uh, controlling the bypass whenever 10% enters the vaporizer, only 10% of the uh, partial pressure will be delivered uh, accordingly at uh, the temperature of 20, of course, room temperature. And this is, this is the wicks, as you can see, the surface area is being increased by this wick. You see that how does it, the, the area is increased, and this is the centrid tube, whether it's metal or glass, to increase by bubbling uh, the surface area. This is uh, this is what I'm going to uh, explain later on that thermal thermal stability, uh, where as if as if the 
contents of the vaporizer act as a heat reservoir to initiate the process of uh, vaporization. Now we go back to the slides. So we will discuss how do we uh, control the temperature of the vaporizer. Uh, of course, we said before that the uh, boil bottle is a bad uh, conductor of heat, and it has a very low uh, heat capacity to uh, preserve heat. So whenever I want to uh, calculate the heat capacity of uh, the anesthetic, I, uh, I add the heat capacity of the inhalation anesthetic and the uh, uh, and the uh, heat capacity of the uh, copper, you see. So, uh, for instance, the the amount of uh, isoflurane or flucine is about, um, flucine is about two, uh, 200 millimeter, and the, uh, the density is 1.87. Important to uh, memorize it. At a time, the specific heat of uh, uh, halocene, it will yield around 300 uh, kilo, uh, kilo joule, I'm sorry, per uh, Kelvin, you see. So what's the, what's the aim of the density? Of course, whenever I know the density and I know the, the mass, I can uh, estimate the volume. So uh, whenever you have an amount of, uh, of uh, halocene in milligrams or in grams, of course, you can figure out how many moles of it. And each mole occupies 22.4. So knowing the density, knowing the density of halocene, we can, amount, we can figure out uh, uh, the volume of, of, of uh, flucene from the a milligrams of fluorescein, which can uh, uh, be calculated. So uh, the, the second thing is the uh, five kilograms, which is uh, 5,000 gram of uh, copper time, the specific uh, uh, heat of, uh, of uh, copper, as you can see, it's less than, uh, strangely, it's less than halocene. It will yield around uh, 1,950. One when we when we add both of them, it will give me the heat capacity of the system to preserve heat. I want something to preserve heat to keep uh, temperature for the saturated vapor pressure to give me a proper uh, value. Uh, of course, if I want to calculate all the heat capacity of the boils uh, uh, boils bottle, we I know I know the ether specific heat and I know the specific heat of water. We add both of them to yield. Uh, the heat capacity. So these are the uh, three items concerning the temperature control. The second, second uh, point, uh, uh, controlling how do we design vaporizers, how we are trying to uh, improve the vaporizer, what we call uh, the thermal uh, compensation. You see the thermal compensation. We said before the graph which shows the, uh, the, 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 the saturated vapor pressure, which is temperature dependent, and we need, uh, notice the a boiling point and the concentration at any time and the saturated vapor pressure at any time. So uh, in the past, in the vapor vaporizer, as we can see, how did they compensate? Uh, they used to compensate it uh, manually. So you have a thermometer and then you have a knob. This knob has two intersecting lines, a straight one and it, a vertical one. These two lines are intersected at the point. So suppose I want to uh, admit 1% and I know the temperature is 20, I I get the point where the 20 with the 1% intersect, and then I set it so this uh, vaporizer will give me 1% one, uh, uh, one, 1 so it is considered a calibrated manual vaporizer. Uh, the copper uh, kettle, as we said before, is, uh, is uh, made of two flow meters, one of the flow meters going directly uh, at a fresh gas flow, and the other one is entering directly to the vaporizer, where I notice the temperature, from the temperature I can adjust uh, the flow meter to give me the, uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, the concentration uh, required. Of course, uh, all these are now do, done manually by what we call the uh, three, three uh, system of, uh, of uh, uh, calibration. How do we, how do we, uh, how do we, uh, how do we, uh, initiate this uh, compensation automatically. We have what we call bimetallic strip. I'll show it later on. It's made of two, uh, two uh, metals, uh, two metals of uh, different uh, coefficient of thermal expansion. They are wind together. And then when uh, the heat is increased, they, the, 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 the one who is, has more uh, 
uh, specific will take the one closing the opening of uh, the uh, vaporizer at the uh, downstream, uh, making the vapor pressure uh, less less uh, during uh, hot weather. And on the other side, we have a, a, a pillows. This pillows is present. This is present in uh, the emu has a rod. Uh, this pillow has a specific. Uh, 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 most probably ether, which is very susceptible to heat. Whenever the heat is increased, it will expand and it will drag back the rod, uh, closing the uh, downstream. On the other hand, we have what we call the metal rod. Metal rod is made of two metals. One of them in the in, in the center is called and uh, invert. Invert. It is non-expandable, and we have the brass uh, 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 around it. Uh, and then, whenever the heat is increased. This this uh, this this rod is uh, shocked to close uh, the upstream, uh, minimizing the uh, uh, minimizing the uh, the the vapor going to the patient. So these are the automatic uh, methods to uh, compensate for changes of heat. And these are different types of vaporizer containing, of course, this this the message is present in in uh, the emu vaporizer, Epstein Macintosh, and this is and the other one is present in the in the, the this uh, bimetallic is present in the tech uh, series, and this is present in Brega. Uh, another method to uh, for uh, temperature compensation, or for that the temperature will not affect, is uh, what we call the semen vaporizer. Semen vaporizer simply is made of a, a nozzle. This nozzle releases uh, droplets of anesthetic, uh, depending upon the pressure uh, of P1 and P2. Uh, two, uh, two, uh, these two pressures are uh, affected, of course, by the throttle part. So whenever the uh, flow is increased, the pressure drop is increased. So there is more nozzle uh, uh, giving more droplets. So. Uh, this throttle valve is calibrated, controlling, controlling the difference of the pressure according to the flow, so that uh, the flow, the flow is uh, will not uh, affect the final concentration uh, reaching the patient as long as we had settled uh, the the knob to a special uh, concentration. Uh, the the other po uh, point to we, we will discuss uh, the effect of pressure on the vapor. What's the meaning of that? Uh, it means that. Uh, uh, the intermittent post pressure ventilation of a, of a, a ventilator uh, or using very low uh, flow rate as the, that that used in closed circuit where we can uh, use uh, around uh, uh, half a liter per minute. Uh, these two things are capable of creating what we, we call a pumping effect. So it, 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 it induces the pressure to the patient and then it's reflected to the pressure to direct to the vaporizer. So whenever this pressure is read this, the, the the vapor will 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 ascend from from both the downstream and from the uh, upstream going to the patient, so it will increase the concentration. Nowadays, of course, uh, modern vaporizer uh, can compensate uh, during the design of it by three methods. First of all, we have what we call a pressurized valve present in the downstream, so that it will overcome the pressure coming from the intermittent positive pressure of the ventilator. The second thing is making making the bypass chamber equal to the vaporizing chamber what's the what's the aim of that so that whenever whenever there is retrograde of the the, the volume present the, in the uh, uh, vaporizer uh, 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 channel going upwards it will occupy only the bypass chamber it will not extend beyond the uh, the level of the uh, bypass chambers so that it will uh, not uh, yield an increase in the concentration. The third thing is shown in the Draga vaporizer where we uh, increase the length of uh, or incline the length of the inward tube. This will uh, make the liquid anesthetic whenever it's coming upwards uh, during the process of uh, uh, release of pressure. It will induce a, a condensation and will go, go downwards again uh, as a liquid. Uh, use uh, at hyperbaric pressure. Of course, uh, most of the of, uh, of the contemporary vaporizer, uh, whenever they are working at uh, any temperature, they uh, they they no they don't they don't need uh, adjustment for their concentration. In other words, if we have a vaporizer, I'm going to show it later on, uh, 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 working at the normal atmospheric pressure where the 
as we said, the halocene concentration is uh, 32%, which is 32 kilopascal. And whenever I set the, the knob at 1%, according to, uh, to the splitting ratio, of course, we will yield a, a pressure coming out of one at one partial pressure, one uh, kilopascal. And this concentration is 1%. This is in the normal situation where the pressure is 100 kilopascal and the temperature is 20. Whenever I go to a high altitude where the pressure is going to be doubled, 200, we, we will find that the saturated vapor pressure is not uh, uh, dependent upon the pressure. It is only temperature dependent. So we find that the, the concentration will be decreased from the 32 from the uh, 200 to be 16. But the uh, partial pressure, uh, as long as we are setting the dial on one, will be released in 1%, but the uh, concentration will be half, only half percent. And uh, anesthesia works in the brain by the partial pressure, simply speaking. So when, whatever whatever the pressure, uh, the, the, the partial pressure of the anesthetic release from the vaporizer, whether in a normal atmosphere or high or low uh, atmosphere will be similar. So no need for adjustment apart from the, this, uh, 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 this fluorine vaporizer we must rearrange. Now we come what we call the heated pulsed vaporizer, which is, which is shown here. It's made of chamber. The chamber, uh, whenever the, uh, the anesthetic bottle is applied, this anesthetic bottle is under a pressure of 0.4 bar. So it's been applied. The upper part of this uh, chamber has a, a heater and has a solenoid valve. The solenoid valve opens at a frequency accordingly, you see, and releasing the anesthetic. Uh, this is being joined by the a fresh gas flow from another another source. So this is uh, what we, we, we can say the direct injection of the uh, inha uh, inhalation acetic to the uh, fresh gas flow. So whenever I uh, re remind uh, the, uh, the general gas flow, we said that it's PV time NRT. So if we, I want to rearrange it, I can say that N over uh, V equals uh, pressure over uh, RT, you see? So if the pressure and the time uh, and the temperature are kept constant by this system of uh, temperature control at thermostat, keeping also uh, the, the pressure constant, uh, we can say that the, uh, the number of moles, which is N of V, it will uh, co be correlated to uh, the volume, you see? So we, we this delenoid valve will open and close, giving amount of moles with an amount of uh, predetermined volume. This, this can uh, control the amount of uh, inhalation uh, uh, anesthetic going out of this uh, uh, heated uh, pulse uh, generator. Of course, this all this is uh, computerized, uh, joining the fresh gas flow to uh, to go to the patient. Uh, the this fluorine vaporizer, uh, I'll, I'll show it later on, uh, is made of a sum. Of course, the the point is that it uh, boils at around twenty two point six or eight. Uh, imagine that we have something boiling at this degree, so that. This is why we uh, put it in some uh, special uh, container where we heat it more than its boiling point. We heat it to 39 degrees so that it will not boil. It will be still a gas, but the saturated vapor pressure will come out in a very high uh, pressure, maybe one atmosphere or two atmosphere. It's, it's going to be readjusted to, uh, to reach to 1.1 uh, pressure. This, this uh, pressure, pressurized, uh, this fullerene will affect a a differential pressure transducer, as we can see, differential pressure transducer is a, pre is a device which can uh, measure the, uh, the pressure on both sides, you see. On the other hand, the fresh gas flow is going through a, a pass, and this pass, there is a, a restriction to control it. And this also will create the pressure of the, uh, in the upper part. So we have two pressures uh, acting on this diaphragm. So whenever, of course, all this is control, controlled by a processor, I want to uh, assure that this, this foreign is going from, uh, uh, from one part and the fresh gas from is going from the other part to rejoin, to reach the patient at a predetermined level. You see, so this is uh, predetermined by a, a microprocessor uh, controlling to give a proper uh, anesthetic uh, reaching to the patient according to the giving uh, uh, fresh gas flow, you see? The last thing is the uh, draw uh, over vaporizer, as we said before. I'm going to show you some figures first of all before uh, we go back. Of course, this is the three types of compensation, thermal compensation. This is present in most of the tech vaporizer, and this is 
uh, present the emo vaporizer. This is present in Draeger series of vaporizers. This is a normal uh, vaporizer. We have an additional one-way valve so that the retrograde, as you said, from the pumping effect will not be affected. And this is the bevel system, bevel system which directs the fresh gas flow to go through uh, through the surface of the liquid anesthetic so that it, it increases surface of vaporization. This is the bimetallic uh, strip uh, controlling the opening. And this is the bypass. And this is the, uh, the, the path that's going through the vaporizer. So this is simple. Uh, diagram of the normal uh, vaporizer, contemporary vaporizer, and this is the same in vaporizer. We have a pressure in this area and a pressure at that area uh, be, between the throttle valve, and we have a nozzle. This nozzle is uh, creating bubbles according to the different pressure. Whenever the flow is increased, of course, uh, the pressure drop will increase, so it will give more uh, bubbles. So this is controlled by the calibrated uh, throttle valve. This is Siemens vaporizer. This is the effect of the ambient pressure on the working of the vaporizer. This is the uh, vapor pressure normal situation, uh, yielding a certain two kilopascal of halocene uh, from the 100, given a percent of 32. So whenever I set the uh, up at 1%, of course, I'm co controlling slip, uh, the uh, splitting ratio to give me uh, the less uh, the 1%, but it will uh, give me 1%. Uh, of the 100, which will be 30, uh, one kilo per scale. On the other hand, whenever I go uh, up uh, high atmospheres, uh, the pressure is 200. Uh, the pressure will, uh, the saturated pressure will not be affected because uh, it is affected only by temperature. But it, the concentration will be less, and then the 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 the, the, the vapor yielding from the uh, uh, upstream will give me a pressure also of one kilo pascal, but the concentration will be only half. Uh, the same, same uh, partial pressure and anesthesia works in the brain by the partial pressure mainly. This is why we don't have to readjust uh, the knob whenever I go to a different atmosphere. Apart from the, this fluorine, as we said before, we must uh, uh, readjust the knob. This is the heated. Uh, uh, heated uh, pulse vaporizer the chamber, and then we add the, the bottle with the pressure this, and this is the heater, and this is the solenoid valve opening and closing according to the needs, uh, and this is the fresh gas flow, and this is how the uh, the the moles with a, a certain volume is being rejoining the fresh gas flow, and this is mainly the 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 principle of working of the direct injecting of the inhalation anesthetic, and this is of course the 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 this foreign vaporizer this is the uh, differential transducer the French transducer uh, measuring the pressure on both sides and this is the sum where there is a heater and the vapor is coming out in a one uh, one 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 thousand five hundred milli millimeter mercury double the more than the atmospheric pressure double atmospheric pressure uh, being controlled by a special restrictor valves and a processor controlling all this, rejoining the fresh gas flow to give uh, the final concentration to the patient according to the fresh gas. And this is a miniature ox uh, oxygen vaporizer. Uh, we'll, we'll tell you a hint about it. And uh, this, is, uh, this is the system where we, 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 we so that we'll not uh, put different vaporizer in different different uh, liquid in different vaporizer. A well fitted uh, uh, device to the bottle and to the knob uh, or the uh, filling uh, port of the vaporizer. And this last figure I want to tell you what's the meaning of a vaporizer outside the circuit and inside the circuit. This is the uh, uh, the fish gas going through the anesthetic pressure. We have the inspiratory limb and the Y uh, shape, and we have the expiratory limb. You see, you can see the. Uh, the blow, the low, uh, the, the I'm sorry, the, uh, the 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 non calibrated vaporizer, which is uh, blow, uh, the, the draw over vaporizer, is present inside the circuit. This is inside the circuit. Whether whether the the contemporary vaporizer are are present in the course of the fresh gas flow, we call it outside the circuit. Uh, this vaporizer ought to be non calibrated. It doesn't have to be uh, an efficient uh, vaporizer, and it receives the expiration of the patient which uh, carries uh, humidity and uh, heat. Uh, so uh, it's better, of course, in this system to have 
something uh, uh, stimulating concentration of the acetic to assure that the patient is receiving a, a proper uh, concentration of the acetic. So this is what we call a, a vaporizer outside uh, the circuit. This, the last thing is, uh, is, is uh, I want you to have a look about this are the uh, problems that uh, uh, occurs vaporizer 10 points. Uh, we have, of course, incorrect uh, agent can be the displaced in the vaporizer. Tip, tip, tipping is the vaporizer being inclined uh, 45 degree. Of course, this will uh, this will affect the amount of vaporizer reaching. It. The liquid will go to the circuit, increase the concentration. We may have overfilling and we have uh, uh, vapor leak. Uh, under filling and we have of course leaks but the most common uh, cause of leak the plug of the vaporizer or the mounting of the selectetic type of vaporizer is not placed in a proper uh, way or the dysfluorine and all the all rings uh, cause, uh, causing leak you see whenever i'm filling the 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 dysfluorine vaporizer i, I can leak uh, and then if we have electronic failure uh, on contamination we well, suppose I, I heard before that one of the vaporizer was filled with uh, alcohol. Alcohol, of course, the uh, uh, reversal flow. We have the the the, the inwards and the outwards part of the of the any vaporizer. We co consider it a, a male and a female, so it may be shifted, and uh, we you must uh, assure that the control uh, dial uh, is in the proper position after serving uh, surfacing. It, it may be uh, uh, shifted. So all these are uh, methods that uh, can uh, induce uh, hazards uh, during the process of vaporization. Of course, uh, working in the MRI has a special type of vaporizer or what is going to be attracted to the magnetic field. The, the last uh, point is the care of vaporizers. Uh, care of vaporizers may be calibration. You, you ought to calibrate the vaporizer, I think, every six months or one year by a refractometer, which will uh, tell you what uh, about it later on. And then we must assure after uh, at least one week to remove the halocene from the from the vaporizer. Otherwise, this simone is very sticky. It will affect the working wicks of the vaporizer. Uh, I hope that I accomplished my mission. It is a, a, a big uh, subject. Uh, I'm sorry for my mistakes. Uh, uh, it is considered as the bride of the uh, physics. You see, uh, we have in, in Islam what we call the 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 bride of the Quran, uh, which is uh, Ar Rahman, the merciful verse in Quran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.